everybody. So we're gonna make bash bars for the Corvette and uh, we got this inch and a half DOM 095 wall tubing and that's what we're gonna make it out of. At FDF Race Shop here, we have this really cool uh, software that Josiah bought years ago when he made roll cages uh, called Bentec. So with this software, we can uh, type in all the dimensions of our hoop, like for instance, the width, the height, and etc. It gives us the angles and the start of where we bend each angle. So if we were to just guess all this stuff, it would it'd be really hard. But this software allows us to put the bends in the precise location to where we don't mess things up and it fits tightly in a bumper or in a car. So it's pretty sweet. I'm starting to work on the front bash bar here. I got half of it bent up and I'm about to do the last bend here. So what I did was, or I guess Josiah helped me do this. He typed in what he wanted uh, in terms of width of the bash bar and, and depth and all that. And Bentec gave us this information here, which is the first bend, number one, second bend, the third bend, and it gave us the locations where we start each bend. So for instance, like the first bend, we're gonna start at seven and three quarters and we're gonna bend at 38 degrees. Second bend, 34 and 5 16 inches, and then bend at 16 degrees, and so on and so forth. So pretty sweet. It uh, takes the guesswork out of it and makes your tubes look sick. What you can see here is the first bend. That's my mark, and I line it up with this part of the tube bender, and I just bent it to 34 degrees. Same deal with this second bend here. Pull it out a little bit. So the second bend, I had the mark right here, and then I bent it to 16 degrees. That's this angle right here. So now I have the last and final bend to do on this pipe. I'm gonna bring it up to my mark. So I got my mark butted up with my uh, bender here. What I'm gonna do here is try to eye up this tube and make sure it's sitting 90 degrees. The worst thing is if I got all these angles dialed in and then, you know, the bash bar isn't square to itself. Like you got a bend going this way and going that way. Like when you sit it flat, it's like pointed up and down, right? So that's what I'm making sure. I'm making sure that the bash bar is 90 degrees. That looks pretty straight. I just made it not straight. Oh yeah, brother. Okay. So I got my little angle finder here. I'm gonna find zero, so that's pretty close. 0 0.2 degrees. And then I want this part of the tube to be 38 degrees. Chromoly tubing has spring when you bend it, just like most metals that are high tensile strength, whatever. <laughs> when you bend it, it has a little bit of spring back. So it'll go to 38 and it'll probably spring back to 36. So what I'm gonna do is bend it to 40 and hopefully it springs back to uh, 38. So here we go, let's give her, let's give her a try. Okay, it's starting to load up. Let me just give her one last check to make sure it's square. Looks good. So that was our 38 degree mark and I'm gonna bend it over to 41 and that'll give us our 38 degrees. I know I said two, but it's always never enough when I do it. So let it out. Okay, so we'll check our base. It's at one degree going, yeah, one degree slanting that way. So that's at 37.2. And if we edge this about one degree, we'll hold that up there, 38.3, that's literally perfect. So yeah, like I said, we had to uh, bend it over a couple degrees to get that spring angle right. But in the end, it all worked out to uh, what we wanted. And now I'm just gonna throw this in the bandsaw, chop off the end and test fit it on the car. The moment of truth. It doesn't fit. So I wanted the end way shorter, so it will. No, it looks great, man. If we cut like, Probably honestly six off because I don't want this to go into the tire. Yeah. Probably cut like this much off. It'll go right into the end there. I think it'll touch here, but it won't touch there. 
so I wanted to touch the corners is the most important thing. So I would say we'll start with taking four inches off each end. I mean, if you wanted it to touch the middle, we could just add bend, like you, you already know that. Spend well, more what there. we need to do is actually put the bumper on the car and then hold it in. Yeah. That's what we should be doing. Okay. How do we hold the bumper up and hold we'll this in? We probably have to use vice grips and clamp it somewhere. Sorry, Jay. Dude, side to side. My bet. My neck. Can you even get it in? Uh, that's what I'm trying. I got this side if you want to. It's too crazy. Here, let me go further towards your side. One more. That's it. You know what I'm saying? We need to cut the ends shorter. We, we definitely need to cut the end shorter, and then I think it'll push in about another two inches. How much of the end do you want to cut off? Four. Four inches off the end. Okay, so we tested it in the bumper and the ends here are hitting the bumper before these points are. So we're gonna cut four inches off each end here and it's probably gonna bring this bend closer to the bumper and then we'll get the lengths to our feet. That's perfect, man. Unreal. <laughs> okay guys, so we got the body panel screwed together. Okay, so what I'm doing here is getting the rear quarter panel screwed to the uh, rear bumper. Uh, right now I'm just using a self-tapper, same technique that I used with the front uh, over fenders and inner fenders, you know, self-tapper them together, get your fitment and points right, and then I'm gonna blast holes and then send some rib nuts through them and then permanently secure them after that. So I mentioned he wanted some double-sided tape in, in between these panels to secure them better instead of just relying on M6 fasteners because those could rip the holes away from themselves. That's what I'm working on. And uh, as soon as we get that fastened together to each other, we're gonna send this big, beautiful bash bar on the back of this thing. We bent up this little, quick little hoop here. We're gonna get it, get it fitted up to the back pretty tightly. So we're gonna have it touching. Why is the tail light hot? <laughs> I just touched my elbow on it and it's warm. Make the bash bar fit tight up against this uh, rear bumper and then make legs standing off the rear core support. Probably have a couple plates mounting the bash bar to the rear bumper and supporting its weight. And have some other cool goodies that we have up our sleeves. Just uh, trucking along. Okay, just a little update for you guys. I'm gonna do a little walk around before we prep this car to head for some track testing. During the track testing, we are gonna be doing a panelist test so we can see everything, look at everything, monitor stuff and make sure things are good. In the back, we are very close to final fitting and mounting this body kit. We have the Sultan inner fenders, we have HGK carbon Kevlar exterior. My goal is to remove this whole rear quarters and bumper and inner fenders as one piece. So we're gonna cut more of this inner fender, allowing it to be pulled off directly backwards. So the only locations where this entire rear will be mounted is at the door sill. There's gonna be a bracket holding this coming to here on these two bolts that hold this uh, structure. Then we're gonna have a bash bar come off of this brace. And then off of the bash bar, we're gonna have two tabs, one here, and one here and that's gonna hold the back. As it sits, it's not even bolted, it's literally just vice gripped. It's like so stiff compared to anything else. So with those added brackets, that's gonna be enough and then we'll be able to remove this whole thing. We'll time everything to make sure that we're able to do things like this within five minute timeouts, but probably 30 to 45 seconds to remove and then probably around the same or a little bit more to get it back on. Come this way. 
So we've got to figure out the door fitment right now when I open the door. It kind of jams on the front of the fender. But other than that, we realized that these HTK doors hit some of the factory things that are on the car. This corner sill or this side sill. So we had to do some chopping there to get it to fit better, but it fits good now. We've got the dash in. We've got our Link ECU uh, display, which is actually over here. So this display, see, Link, Link. So this display is programmable through this port, which I mounted in the dash. And then our on off kill switch is here, also into the dash. From there, we can control everything. If I turn on my running lights, you can see that the rear are on. They're not all plugged in though. Not all plugged in, so don't judge me. Turn that off. We've got our wipers, cool suit, hazards, all the goods. Steering, D&D quick release, chilling. Wires for the display, chilling. Dash, solid, handbrake. Not mounted or hooked up, but it's gonna be relatively there. We've gotta do our steering wheel hanger. Mount that up. I've gotta mount this touch pad. Something like that is where I want it. Should I get in the car? Yeah, I should get in the car. All right, I'll get in the car. You pulled my arm. Oh, let me get in, show you what's going on. <clears throat> gotta make a bracket for that. Gotta put this here, and then I gotta make a mount for this. This is cool. Still got that. How many drift cars still have that? At that formula drift level, not that many. Anyways, shifter's good. Handbrake's gonna be roughly here. Let's throw this in. So I'm gonna run that right about there. Everything feels good. Pedals are nice and natural. I'm really happy with the seating position. It's much better than the S14. The downside, my eyes are at the same height as my air filter. So I'm gonna get a really good look at the air going into my engine and smoke. I'll probably be, be able to see the smoke get sucked into my engine. This is in a really ergonomical, good spot. The shifter down, reverse. Was worried about the clearance there for the handbrake when this is in reverse, but everything looks good. I may make a custom one of these to kick back the shifter knob just so it's slightly back, but I'm not too upset with it now. We got some wires and lines to tighten up. I, I remade the gas pedal. I made it a little bit higher off the floor and I changed the ratio a bit. So it's gonna be up there. We should have that done for tomorrow. And then we're testing in two days from now. That's it. And then casual plug, Royal Purple, that's what we're running. I think it's the best and you're gonna find out why later. Let's get out and look at the front. We've got the headlights in. Morimoto headlights and Morimoto rear taillights. These are really slick looking. They have a nice strip here that makes it kind of look like the C7 headlights. Really bright, cool looking. They fit good. These are mounted to the car and the same principle as the rear. These are gonna be fully removable very quickly. Main point, this is impossible to work on or do plugs and all that fun stuff with the full inner fenders. So we're gonna make it so that we can take this whole fender off really quickly. We have tacked up the bash bar and we already have our second bash bar being made. So we're making two. Trying to see how I wanna do this corner support. Obviously, if you smash the corner, you want it to protect the headlight. So I'm gonna make some sort of a brace of smaller tubing that goes from this corner to the chassis. Everything fits good. I had to raise the front ride height now that we have a body on it, I can see where everything's at. So we needed to raise the front a little bit. That was easy to do. I'm glad I got to try that. Otherwise, we got the glass in, that's new. The roof is, you know, removable and nice that we can do that. Unsure of how to mount it. It doesn't have the factory mounting things on it. Just comes with some threaded holes so that I guess you can make brackets to do that. But that's your little update. Jack, I got nothing else. That's it for me. Back to Kyle. Over to you, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. If he's not here, he's slacking. I'm gonna have to get him in a lot of trouble for that.
Alright, let's push it back in. 